sections in this clip number one show all of the right upper abdomen. Note duodenal peristalsis and fasting gallbladder's normal shape and position under the right liver lobe. Harmonic wall thickening in figure 2 is displayed with a shadowing asymptomatic concretion. In this static figure number 3, please note duodenal bulb with a little antrum with much intestinal gas beginning from the left and pylorus in between and not distended extra and intrahepatic bile ducts bars. Note in number 4 the invasive ingrowth and the partial loss of gallbladder lumen. Initial diagnosis of stones was only partly correct and with the malignancy it became much more serious. A harmless variant in number 5 however less a bile flow in the compartment top of the gallbladder may dispose to stone formation. Another harmless variant in number 6 if a diagnostic puncture is however regarded to be necessary liver cirrhosis, note the liver shape, puncture complications are possible. Adjacent but outside the gallbladder, you find in number 7 bulbous gas formations. A classically incarcerated stone is seen in number 8, less easy to find since it is not liquid surrounded but with a shadowing. This asymmetric stone in 9a became a symptomatic one once the patient was told the finding. Inflammatory invasion around the gallbladder and enlarged lymph nodes together with clinical signs indicate in number 10 an acute cholecystitis. In number 11 an asymptomatic sludge formation could be proven by simple patient positioning and the gravitational movements. Total lumen loss in number 12 and invasive growth again indicate a malignancy. Like in clip number 4, an HCC hepatocellulary carcinoma is possible as well, bilirubin stenting was needed. Ugly in appearance, but harmless, and usually vanishing. Sludge formations in number 13. Another finding without importance in number 14. A gallbladder diverticulum associated with asymptomatic stones. Acute inflammation, stones related with its typical clinical and sonographical findings is displayed in number 15, including pain with visualized palpation. Again, an invasively growing malignancy with associated stone mass in number 16. Asymptomatic, once more again, were these stones in number 70 not overranting any action. An acute hepatitis A was responsible of these sludge formations in number 18 in the sense of a dyskinia of bile juice, a completely reversible and incidental finding. Again, an asymptomatic sludge ball migrates due to patient positioning to the left in number 19 as in 11 and 13 too. Bubble flow demonstrates the ingrowth of this malignancy in number 20. No tumor stillness with the spontaneous elastography 
and stones as well. These frightening looking masses in the Garbara in number 21 turned out to be harmless at operation. No real signs of invasion were seen with bubble studies in clinical ultrasound. These sludge formations in number 22A2 were regarded as incidental findings only and not as a true diagnosis. On the contrary, in figure 22B, invasive growth again and lumen loss were indicative for a malignancy picture comes from times before the bubbles. An acute cholecystitis on the second day of antibiotic treatment is seen in number 23 with formation of membranes which vanish spontaneously on day 4. Asymptomatic as well were these formations in number 24. On the contrary, reasons of symptoms were quickly found in clinic ultrasound in number 25, an occluding stone of the infundibulum sludge and typical signs of acute cholecystitis. This holds true for number 26 as well. Please note the sludge masses. And this is true for number 27 too. So note the helpfulness of adding clinical ultrasound to history and physical examination by simply looking into the patient. This depicts in number 28 a typical finding after laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Another mass in the Garbara lumen, here in number 29, a harmless one once again, polyps only with a diameter beyond 10 mm without consequences. Erubilia after EST, endoscopic sphincterotomy in 30 was accompanied by symptoms and site palpation pain, so operation was recommended. This stones bearing and shrunk gallbladder in number 31 was asymptomatic as an incidental finding. In this in number 32, no gallbladder lumen could be found at all either due to a total calcification of the gallbladder wall or caused by an extraordinary stone load. See previous, see in number 32. The same holds true again in number 34. Much more serious is the patient situation in number 35, with the tumor mass invading the gallbladder lumen, an HCC. In number 36, border lines of the gallbladder are intact and there is no tenderness on palpation to be noted. Another harmless finding, a little polyp, in number 37A. Despite the size of 10 mm is exceeded in number 37, operation was not performed due to the advanced age of the patient. Stones give shadows and not so do polyps as you can see in number 38. This patient in 39 after EST as well had to be operated because of symptomatic cholecystolysis. Another victim of an advanced malignancy is seen 
in 40 a liver invasion again. After ERC only, a minor but symptomatic stone burden can be demonstrated by a clinical ultrasound by echoscopy following immediately endoscopy. Stones float in the boundary surface between lighter gall juice and contrast dye. This stone in the so-called Freudian cap department of the gallbladder was asymptomatic. Not so these stones in number 43. It is debatable and remains unclear whether they are to be considered as the real troublemakers or not, with smaller stones already having passed into the digestive tract. Operation only reliably could prove the benign nature in this case in 45. From clinical U.S. examination, malignancy in this chronic cholecystitis was possible as well. This stone in number 45 became a symptomatic one, giving reason to a hydropical enlargement of the gallbladder. Stigmata of an acute cholecystitis were displayed in 46. Please note the normal right flexure. In number 47, once more, a stone's caused acute cholecystitis is documented. This hydropically enlarged gallbladder in 48 bears signs of urinary inflammation as well. In number 48, chronic inflammation and stones have given reason to wall thickening. Whereas number 40 shows an invasive malignancy, probably in HCC again, not respecting a biological border land. This is true in case number 51 as well. Please note the stones. Bubble technique in 52 nicely displays liver invasiveness of the tumor again. Again, number 53 displays these features of infiltration repeatedly. Shown as case number 4 already, the same patient is repeated intentionally. It was not only the stones causing complaints. Nor this was the case in number 55, a typically invasive malignancy as well. Floating stones as here in 56 are seldom, as they usually are heavier in weight as compared to the heaviness of gall juice. But you will find it, even in stones too small to provoke a shadow.